Well, it's always nice to uh, get the preseason press conference in play because it, it means it's uh, the first week of competition. So we look forward to uh, to playing. Certainly, we're you know it's different being up here as you know a number of years where we come here and we're ranked one or two in the country and. Uh, I think expectations are always high, and I want the players to embrace those. But this is a, you know, a team that uh, is going to have to earn their rankings, and you know, I look forward to seeing how that plays out. Question for Haley: I'm uh, interested how uh, taking yoga this summer helped with <laughs> on the court. Pause. That yoga class was the bomb. You know you loved it. It was awesome. Um, actually, it worked really, really well because I was trying to get some strength back this summer. So it was a really good class because it helped me physically become stronger. And then it also just helped me, like, relax. I had a lot of things going on this summer. And it was a really great class that just helped me center myself, gave me time out of my day to just let my body do its thing and breathe and flow. It was, it was an awesome class. You know it was an awesome class. <laughs> Coach, early on this season, what are you going to be looking for specifically from uh, from this team? Well, I mean, I think w with every team, you you look for just the general personality of the team. You look for uh, on court leadership. You look for individuals that are going to embrace the competitive momentum. You know, I think those are are really the important things. You know, as you know, coming off the Olympics and, and spending the last two weeks watching volleyball every day was was great. I enjoyed uh, having the chance to do that, and then it dawned on me it was, uh, and this was the best coverage, and it's the 10th Olympics I've watched as the Penn State coach. So it was, it was great. I kept identifying the opportunity for the players to watch the best men's and women's players in the world playing to to try and model some of the behaviors and look at some of the things that uh, you know they maybe can transfer to their own game uh, this is for any of you ladies maybe not coming in ranked as high as you're used to does that give you kind of a chip on your shoulders and maybe a little extra motivation as you start getting ready here oh um, obviously it's something that we always strive for we always want to be ranked high um, in preseason rankings but it does give us a little chip on our shoulder we know that we're going to be a great team. We know that we can play Penn State volleyball and we can do really, really good things this season. And we want to show everyone, now that we are ranked ninth, that you guys ranked us wrong. And we want to show everyone that we are going to push ourselves to the limit. We are going to fight through all the adversity that comes our way. And we're just going to show everyone that no matter what you throw at us, that we're going to be ready, we're going to be prepared, we're going to be, um, we're just going to be ready for whatever happens during the season. And we want to show everyone that even though you we you guys ranked us ninth, I mean, it doesn't determine how we're going to play throughout the season. We always want to finish better than what the preseason ranking was, and I believe that we can do that. And at the end of the day, it's just a number. I mean, last year we were ranked number one the entire season, and we obviously didn't finish there. So it's just a number. It doesn't determine our destiny. It doesn't determine what we're going to do through the season. It's just where people think we are right now. And whether we stay there, whether we move up, whether we move down, that can't be determined until we prove ourselves on the court. How do you think? Oh. Yeah, just like they were saying, you know, um, definitely we're looking forward to the season. I know that Haley and Simone, we can't wait for our first game. But um, it gives us a little um, motivation, gets me fired up. Um, I'm ready to hit the court and with my teammates. And um, it's going to be pretty fun. So I'm excited. And I guess this is another kind of a follow-up question for all of you. Kind of going along with that, what do you expect to see from the freshmen, or how do you expect the freshmen to um, contribute this season to that goal? I mean, a lot of times when we were freshmen, uh, the senior class and the junior class and even the sophomore class said, if you can't bring anything, you have to bring energy. And that's a lot of, a lot of times that's what we expect from our freshmen, um, whether it be them playing on the court, whether it be on the bench, whether it be in practice. Anytime we need energy, we expect the younger kids to really help us bring a lot of energy 
they're new to the program, they're new to the situations that are coming their way, but just fighting for their spot on the court and just fighting for each other and really pushing ourselves and we can help them out and they can help us out, bring energy on the court, they can help us make plays, they can help us do a lot of things and that's one of the things that I think that we expect from the incoming freshman class is that we just need, we need them to bring as much energy as possible because at the end of the day that's what's going to help us fight through a lot of things. So for the players, um, what did you see from the Olympic teams that you can transfer over to your team? We saw some great volleyball. We saw some not as great volleyball. There are some moments where I think that there were teams that were making mistakes that didn't need to be made, especially at the Olympic level. But I think one of the key things that we saw was being able to face adversity very well. And I don't know if it was necessarily always from the USA team. Or if it was from, for example, Serbia did an incredible job in the uh, semifinals match into the gold medal match when they were playing the United States because the U.S. was doing a pretty good job. They would make mistakes, but Serbia was coming out swinging all the time. Regardless, the U.S. was ranked number one. They were incredible. And number 19, I don't know her name on the Serbian team, but match point against the United States. She doesn't go up and serve a timid ball and keep it in. She wails her serve, and then not only that, she gets set and she wails her ball on her set, on the game point swing. And she's like 19 years old, and that's something that you learn, and that's something that, I don't hate to say this, but I think it emulates Penn State volleyball. It's we're always swinging hard. We're always going for it, whether the score is 15-15, whether the score is 25-9, whatever it is, 24-9, whatever it is. <laughs> it's always swinging hard. It's always being aggressive, and I, I thought that was some great volleyball. What do you think, Brian? Oh, I wanted to hear your answer. <laughs> um, so, Russ, are you trying to corner the market on setters this season? No, I'm not cornering the market. I, you know, we have a, you know, we have a couple of setters. Uh, you know, I mean, we had uh, two last year, and we had a transfer come in this year. Uh, so, you know, I, I think that uh, we're we're trying to be as strong as we can be in that position, as is every other team. And I think each of the, the three individuals, uh, Wilma, Brianna, and Abby, all have different strengths that they, that they bring to the table. And uh, you know, someone will play, and hopefully somebody will be ready to go in if need be. And, uh, but uh, no, no. I mean, I'm, you're always looking for a good setter. It's what you're looking for. You're looking for somebody that can help you win. Not, you know, I'm not interested in, uh, in just having a number of them. As juniors, you guys have experienced the pinnacle of women's college volleyball, winning the national championship your freshman year, and then obviously losing uh, in the Sweet 16 last year. How do you guys feel that you're more prepared from seeing the top and from kind of seeing yourselves uh, go out a little earlier than you wanted to? Yeah, you know, obviously we want to win every year, um, but it was a really great uh, learning point for us. You know, um, I'm excited that we get a new opportunity to win a national championship. So, um, but it's definitely cool to experience the highs and lows. You know, you, you grow from that situation, and I think that um, this team is ready for a great year. Um, kind of, so you just transferred coaches, right? You just changed assistant coaches, right? Um, one of your, your, your former assistant coach went to Arizona State, and you just got a new, co a new assistant coach, uh, John Dreyer, I think. Uh, Craig Dreyer. Craig, Craig, sorry. Dreyer. Craig, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Craig That's okay. Dreyer. Yeah, we. Craig Dreyer. Yeah. One, one of the things about our program is we we have a lot of people that uh, get opportunities to advance their careers and go elsewhere. We lost three people from the staff uh, last year. Uh, Stevie Mussey's the head coach at Arizona State. Uh, Sean is uh, went from being our volunteer to being an assistant coach. And where is it? Coastal Carolina, and uh, Jesse, who was our director of ops, is an assistant at Denver. So, but uh, you know, Craig Dyer uh, and was with the men's program a number of years ago, and uh, had had great success also on the staffs at uh, Marquette and Pitt. And I spoke with their coaches, and uh, and you know everybody felt very positive about Craig as I did and his wife used to be our sports information uh, uh, individual a number of years ago so I thought it was great to, to bring him back. Uh, Marcos DeSantos is our new uh, volunteer assistant and 
Marcos was at East Carolina with, with my son last year. And, uh, and then we also have a new director of ops in uh, John Perry, who is working with the U.S. national team in Long Beach State. So, the, you know, every, everything takes time. So even if you have an entire roster back, if you have a different staff, it really changes the dynamics of things. And, uh, you know, it'll, I think it'll take some time for us to uh, hit a groove with the staff and, uh, and the players as well. We have some new players. We lost some great players last year. Both Megan Courtney and, and Ayana went on to play uh, professional volleyball when they left mid-year. And, and both of them are playing professionally in Europe uh, this upcoming season. So we have a lot of uh, holes to fill. They were, they were two really well-rounded uh, players and, and certainly a great offensive player in Ayana. So, you know, those two individuals and Laura Carraway, who was a, a selfless individual that, that really made us a better unit. So, you know, it's nice to hear the players talk about their, their plans and expectations, and we'll see if they can transfer their words to performance. Well, I mean, I, I was I was proud of Alicia, you know, when she was here, and uh, you know, I mean, I think it's tough to go from being an alternate to, you know, to having to uh, stick it out for another quad and, and to be able to earn the right to, uh, an opportunity to 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 lead your nation's team. So, you know, I was really I was pleased for her because I know she worked hard and. You know, and I was thrilled with Krista being the captain of the team. And, uh, you know, I was saddened by the fact that Nick Fawcett was an alternate for the second consecutive Olympics. That's, that was tough. And, and Megan uh, had played in the last Olympics and then was an alternate this time. So it was, you know, I mean, to me it was great every night to watch Penn State players, whether they were playing, you know, the men playing both for uh, USA and a couple of guys that, you know, I saw play when they were here, you know, involved with the Mexico team. So... I thought, uh, you know, I thought it was great. I mean, I thought, uh, you know, the matches are, are really competitive all the time and you have to come ready to play. And, you know, I like the last days sitting there watching two of our wrestling coaches, you know, seeing them sitting on the side watching, uh, you know, Casey and Cody uh, coaching their guys. So, I mean, I, I, it just made me feel really good that, uh, you know, the Penn State guys and rec halls represented well at the uh, Rio Olympics. Oh, so that was a cute way, Gordon. Really? <laughs> uh, you know, I, I'm not. I'm not sure who, who the setter will be. I mean, it's ch it changes every day. So, if it changes every day, I guess that's not so good. You know, if you uh, if you look at it from that standpoint, that's not a great thing. But, you know, I think you know. Again, I think all of them have different uh, strengths. So somebody will be setting, and if they do a nice job, they'll stay out there. And if they if they mess up a bit, then we'll give somebody else another opportunity. And you know, and if another person uh, has to go in and do that, then you know, I mean, you could ask the players who they like hitting from. Maybe they'll give you a better answer. It's not going to impact what I decide to do, but it might be entertaining for you. I am actually an incredible sitter. Yes, I can. <laughs> Oops, who do you like? Who do you guys like? You like the setters? Yeah. yeah. Or do you just like whoever sets you? Um, I like I think I think all of our setters are great. I think Abby's got great fire. I think Brianna's got great hands. I think Wilma's got great speed. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of setters. It's a plethora. There you That's go. A lot of them. What we need to do is pick one. Blend it. No, yep. it sounds like we need to blend. Yeah. Just push them all together. Well, I mean, I don't know anything about the other teams, so uh, I, I'm really good friends with the West Virginia coach, so I'll look forward to seeing him. Uh, I'm good friends with the North Carolina coach, and I know a couple of years ago they were a couple swings away from from going to the Final Four, so I know their talent level is, is really high. So, 
at the beginning of the season, I, I, I spent a lot more of my time trying to figure out what's going to be our best uh, lineup and rotation pattern for substitutions to to try and enhance our chances for being successful and build for the future. It's a, it's a really long season. And, uh, you know, I thought we started last year's season really strong and, and we had some flashes of, of being uh, close to the, to the ranking that we had. But then I also thought as the season progressed, a lot of people wore down and weren't physically able to play at that same level. And we lost to better teams on those nights that we lost. I'm uh, curious if you guys have any pre-match superstitions at all. <clears throat> there are a couple of pre-match superstitions that I think the whole team does. Like, we always slap our chairs a specific way after we watch film. Um, I can't think of anything crazy. We warm up the same way every day. Every game day we warm up. And do oh, we warm up the same way every yeah. day. Uh, we have a run around the outside of rec hall before we run, and that's like a pretty superstitious run. It's got to be a good one. Um, you do the slap thing before you go out, you know. Oh, yeah, I do do. I have I have a weird hand thing that I do. I mean, there's nothing crazy, nothing super specific. Like, I don't have to wear the same underwear or anything, but <laughs> <laughs> just the little things. Any more questions? Okay. Thanks, everybody. Uh, we should end on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a good line to end on. You're welcome. <laughs> You can't possibly be taking me out there for the underwear talk.